Today, I wanted to show a more business application and a full flow in creating this business application sheet. So this is the final product we're looking for. It's a list of employees running across the top, a list of dates and tasks to be tracked each day uh, throughout the year. So how many hours was this employee in? How many calls did they make? How many calls did they receive? How many sales did they make? And then how many services were performed that day based on sales that they made? So here's the sheet I'm starting with. I've already gone ahead and put the names of the employees at the top. It's the rest of it that's really going to require formulas and scripts to make this work well. Google Sheets has a really cool formula called Sequence. And it's going to create a full sequence. It can be rows, columns, or both. For the number of rows, we have 366 days this year. We're only doing one column, and then start is what the initial value should be. So in a simple one, you can set it to just start at 10 and do 10 numbers show up 10 through 20. In this case, we want all the days of the year. And days are stored in Google Sheets and Excel and any other spreadsheet. They're stored as numbers and displayed as a date that we can read. To get that number, we're going to use the N formula. So it just returns a number value of whatever we put in. And we're going to call it date 20. One, so January 1st, 2020 as our start. This is the numeric value, which we convert to a date. And we can see this really is January 1st through December 31st. I'm just going to copy that and do paste values. So essentially, we keep the values there, but the formula in A2 is gone, so we don't have this formula always there. Now, how do we get from here, where we just have this list of dates, to here? That's the primary function that we're going to be looking at today. So we have one, two, three, four, five of these variables, five of these metrics that we want to track. So we're going to go through and insert several rows between. But obviously, that would get very tedious to have to add five rows between every single one. So here's the script that we're using today. We're simply getting the active sheet. In this case, I do want to specify all the active sheet we want. In this case, it's really just sheet two. To make sure that it doesn't run this on sheet one. I don't want to redo that. We're just going to do this on sheet two. And here is the array that I've created to hold all those values, to hold all those metrics. This is the way that JavaScript stores the two dimensional array that we need. So we're looking at a single column and then multiple rows. If we we're doing it the other way, if we we're doing a single, uh, single row with multiple columns, we do a single set like this, and that would just be hours, comma, calls in, comma. So basically, this outer is the column, and then the inner is the rows themselves. So in this case, we want one column and multiple rows, so each indice, each extra array, each nested array is going to be a separate row inside of this column with these different values in it. Now I did a little bit of math to figure this out. So we're going to be starting at zero. One, two, three. First one is going to be inserted at, the first set of five is going to be inserted at row three, followed by Let's go ahead and do these first ones. Because this is how you would do it manually, is you would select how many rows you want and then do insert five and five. So the second set is going to be at nine, and then 15, and then 21 are the. So this is just at 
the first loop iteration or the first time that the loop runs, we're going to insert five rows at row three, then five rows at row nine, then five rows at row 15, then five rows at row 21, etc. So I did have to do a little bit of math to find what, what formula, what function is going to get us that correct number. So for input zero, I want output three. For input one, I want output nine. The formula that I came up with that works is the index times six plus three. So we have zero times six is zero plus three is three. One times six is six plus three is nine. Two times six is 12 plus three is 15. So that is the function. That's the mathematics that we're going to use to create the right number of rows at the right row index. And that's what I have written here. So in my for loop, it's just running from zero to 366. So the entire date range. And then after each loop, it just increases the value by one. And we're gonna have it do two things. I wanted to insert five rows, and then set the value of those five rows to hours, calls in, calls out, sales, services. If we can see it runs through. It is going to take a moment to finish. It is doing this for the entire, all 366. Yeah, we are. February. We can see it really is adding those rows in as the row number at December 31st just continues to increase. In the end, we're going to have almost 2,200 rows. So we still have a little while to go. Halfway there. And then next, we're going to set the formatting so that it matches the original sheet. So now we're in August. We're almost there. 1600 of 2200. And since it is doing it one at a time, it is going to take this time. If we had created the entire array, so the entire array of dates and values on the script, it would have just printed the entire thing onto the sheet at once. But since I am having it doing the insertion and the the insertion of the rows and populating the rows via the script, it is going to take a little bit of time to run through. Excellent. So there's all of them. Now, this isn't that easy to look at, it isn't that easy to track what we're really looking at here. So, I want to give some conditional formatting. And you can apply conditional formatting to an entire row. Let's just select the entire sheet. Right click. And I want to use a custom formula. So the custom formula we're going to use is going to look for the correct value in A and then populate the entire row. So if we're just doing hours, it would be equals A1 equals hours. And the reason we can use just equals A1 instead of equals A, conditional formatting is built on already. So if we specify one cell and apply it to an entire range, it will automatically convert that cell reference to the entire range. But here we can see it only applied it to the initial cell, to A. It didn't apply it to the entire row, even though the range has it applied. 
we just need to make that a constant or a static. So if we put the dollar sign before A, then it's always going to check in A rather than moving it on each check. So basically the problem was it did that correctly for A1, but then it checked A2, that's not ours, A3, that is ours. But it checked B1, B2, and B3 and didn't highlight any of those. Whereas if we put it this way, it will. So that gives us hours. I really don't want to set up five separate conditional formatting rules. So we can use the array notation for OR, Boolean logic, which is the plus sign. And each one is just going to be bounded by parentheses. So parentheses A1 equals in, we're going to see that works just fine. Again. Obviously, if you want each row to be a different color, then you would have to go through and create multiple conditional formatting rules. Since I'm just going to have all of them be the same color, and basically the white bars are going to be dates, and anything colored is going to be the, the metrics, this works just fine for our purposes. And then I simply take all of these columns, so borders, Let's do an outer border and vertical borders so that everything gets separated visually how we like it. So the two things we primarily look, three things we primarily looked at, the sequence formula and applying it to dates. This function, which automatically inserted a number of rows and populated it. Remember, you just need to do some math to find the right it's, it's a linear regression problem, basically. You just need to find the right output formula for the input from zero to a number that you're using. And then using conditional formatting in an array and using conditional formatting with absolute references.